Hi everybody, my name's Sam and today I'm going to take you through a walkthrough of how to import and export Revit models in and out of SkySiv Structural 3D. So Revit is an extremely powerful documentation tool, um, really helpful for architects and engineers um, to collaborate on and we've built in the ability to import and export Revit models uh, so you don't have to rebuild the models um, that you're given by the architect. And the great thing is uh, you don't need a copy of Revit to use this functionality so uh, as you can see I'm, I'm demonstrating on a MacBook. Uh, you can use it regardless of the operating system whether it's PC, Mac or even a device like a mobile device but uh, yeah the, the main thing is here you don't need a copy of Revit to import and export uh, those files into the software and uh, proceed with the engineering side of things. So uh, we're going to demonstrate how that's possible. So I've got a few examples here. So we're going to open up a couple of Revit models, uh, but I'll start with something very simple, um, sort of like a steel frame. And you can just drag and drop the Revit file into the interface and just drop it into this screen. So the software accepts a, a fair few different file formats. Um, Revit being one of them, so you can just drag and drop them into the user interface. And I'll open up another tab and just while that's loading we're going to also import another model. Um, so we can get a few examples of, of different buildings and, and how these uh, sort of come into play. So we're going to do maybe this one here. So we're going to do one very clean Revit model. And when I say clean Revit model, I mean something that's been had all the material properties or section properties, um, the analytical model itself well um, defined. And then we're going to enter one that maybe hasn't had as much refinement, um, which is the second version, sec the second model, and requires a little bit of a repair. Um, from the engineer's side because we're not really sure the quality of the Revit model that we're going to receive. Sometimes they're not great and there's a sort of review and um, repairing process. So we'll demonstrate both examples. So here it'll preview what that model looks like. Um, you can sort of inspect it, zoom in. This is the Revit model itself. And then we will click this import button to proceed with the importing into S3D. So what this is doing now is it's extracting all um, the material properties, all your section properties, all your loads, your supports, um, the geometry itself, so where the node uh, positions are, where the members are. Um, so it does quite a lot of processing. So we're going to let that run and we'll also import this one here. So we've got another example. Um, and so we will import this one as well. So these both come from Revit. It will... The, the, the key p uh, piece of information that it does import into this structural analysis software is the analytical model and that's really important. Um, so in Revit you have both the documentation model and the analytical model and the analytical model contains all the structural information that we need to process and import into, into structural 3D. So it's really important to distinguish those um, parts of the model, uh, particularly if you are a Revit model, uh, a Revit user and you do have control over those um, different elements. Uh, definitely the first place to check is your analytical model. Make sure your nodes are connected, make sure your members are defined um, with section properties, with material properties, because we'll see um, in the importing process the difference between a well set up model and a not so well set up model. And you can see how you can sort of streamline that process by just getting some things right on the Revit side. So uh, we'll continue to let that run. So here we have, um, this is the not so well built model and I'm going to keep flicking back and forth but um, we will demonstrate the difference. So um, first thing I sort of do is just look at a bit of an inspection on the model and let's look out for some of the things that when I say it's not that well built, um, you'll see how that how that's the case. So already we can see if we zoom in we've got sort of a floating node and it's just kind of sitting in, in space. This member is connected properly but there's just sort of a node there. We've got some connectivity issues. So we've got these two members crossing but um, there's no node intersecting there so they're actually not technically connected. Um, with structural analysis software there needs to be a node in all the locations of your where you're connecting members. So we can sort of see we're identifying a few issues. It looks like a bit of a duplicate node or something here that's duplicating um, with two labels overlapping. So yeah, it's sort of I, I sort of run through a visual in inspection first just to get an idea of where the model's at. And then I'll usually start by just running a repair model. And 
This will give us some great feedback uh, in terms of the model structure or the, sorry, the model setup and just seeing if it's identifying any issues with the model. So you can see we've identified some unused nodes, which one was one we um, identified earlier and uh, nodes that were very close together. So nodes that probably should just be merged. Um, this will identify that as well. So these red ones are sort of like hard fixes. You'd, you'd want to update those changes, whereas these are more inf you know, inform informative that there's 139 normal m members modeled as continuous. So we can preview that, just have a look at what that means exactly. And what that's saying is that it has identified that this member here has some nodes or some behavior that, um, let's, let's sort of zoom in on that, that member, actually there's a few members there, um, that there might be, so it's identified as uh, normal. Well, actually, these ones are actually continuous. So let me review that one. Let's preview that again. We can inspect some of these ones. Oh, they're all actually continuous. So that one's fine. We can leave that, that one as is. And it, it wasn't a hard stop. So um, yeah, we're fine to leave that one there. The other thing that repair model um, the feature we'll, we'll demonstrate too is just um, inputs that don't seem reasonable. So we're getting a Young's modulus that's missing for material three, um, density missing material three as well. So we're going to review material three. It seems like there might be some issues there. And actually a lot of these um, sections are missing some pretty important information like moment of inertia or section error area. So we can't repair that because obviously the software doesn't know what those values are, but it is indicating that there are some some inputs that don't seem um, you know reasonable or within sort of a range that's acceptable. So we'll review those as well. But for these changes, I want to actually fix those changes um, and we fixed 237 issues uh, and we can approve those changes and sort of get a better feel of of where we're at now um, and you might want to save it at this point just to um, sort of get it into your file storage. Um, we also have revision control too so you can monitor the changes that have been made to the model uh, throughout the repair process. But we can see that earlier node that was kind of just floating around has been removed um, and yeah we've kind of sort of seen um, the model clean itself up a little bit. So Things like this, like the crossing, the members generally need to be reviewed a bit closer. So this one we can just right click uh, and see if it's available to split. Let's see, it's picking up any intersecting members. So once I right click intersecting members, we can see that that's now split the member and connected it with a node. So now this, this column is supporting um, this roof or this beam here. So it, we're sort of going through the using the right click functionality in some cases you don't want to maybe with the bracing you don't want to actually connect those members so this is usually a, a little bit more of a manual process but it lets you properly connect parts of your model that that might otherwise be uh, disconnected and uh, you can make the most of say if if there are a few issues here there's actually only that one member and if anything that looks like a, a modeling issue where we probably want to just delete this because it looks like all the other members there um, don't have that extension of the member so we'll just delete that but if there was a common issue across all those you could just highlight that and right click intersect members and that'll make all the changes for you at once so it's really really quick and clean um, and an easy way to sort of mass edit or mass clean up parts of your model that you know are, aren't really correct okay so um, there was also some materials that we wanted to review as well. So uh, material three was, from memory, an issue. Um, so we're getting a lot of zeros. Now, this usually happens from the Revit side when the section is is uh, sort of connected to a material or a, a material is assigned to a section, but that material doesn't have any properties. So in Revit, you might say, okay, section, you know, section four, has a material property three, but in Revit, you haven't actually defined the, the properties of that material. So there's no way that the automatic um, repair model can pick up and fix these issues, but they're relatively easy to fix up. Um, you might know that this is a steel. So this is uh, the material that's being used in section four. 
So you might know that it is a steel material. So we can just manually enter in steel and you know the relevant I don't know these off by heart, but uh, something like this, 350, just do the same. So now that has some properties and the structural analysis can then assign this material to this section and, you know, obviously apply this, the, the correct strength properties to, the, to that member. So, yeah, there's a few things that are part of the cleanup. Another part of the step of the process is then moving on to solving and this will help you identify uh, any other issues that might exist in your model so you can see it's cleaning up it's fi picked up some of that you know reasonable input input um, checks that will tell you where, where there's sort of missing information um, and if I go to solve it's going to provide me with some more information like I need to add a load or also supports you know we're missing supports in this case so that is um, part of the reviewing process is trying to run a solve and then seeing what information is missing out of the model. Um, but yeah, I always recommend fixing these issues on the Revit side because that is your source of truth. And it just means that your your model, which you're kind of referring to, which is the Revit model. So if you do have Revit, you fix them on the ana analytical model because that way, anytime you import, you don't have to keep repairing and keep cleaning it. You're getting a really streamlined um, design workflow. So I do recommend making the changes on Revit, then re-importing the model once you're happy with that. Um, so let's also have a look at a model that maybe is a, a little bit better prepared. So um, this one, there, there might be a little bit of a cleanup, but not, not too much. Um, so this was that model, that house sort of structure. And you can see it didn't import any of the walls because the walls were all architectural walls. They weren't structural elements. So... Um, it's just pulled in the elements that were defined in the analytical model in Revit. So we can see it's imported all the section properties. We've got a much cleaner model with everything clearly defined. Um, it's come through with the specific section properties as well, um, the material. So kind of just reviewing the model, it looks like um, we did get a, a better import and a better um, outcome of our, our, our structural model. This is in the Imperial system, so we can see this is in uh, KSI units. Um, and we've also got some supports, so this, the structure is supported. There's also some loads applied to the model, um, and these have all been applied in Revit. So, um, yeah, we've kind of got that source of truth that, that I was uh, mentioning earlier. So this is exactly how we've imported the model from Revit. It looks great, so um, we can, again, run the repair model. So that's fine. We can either fix select it or ignore this. Let's just fix it. And run a solve. And we can see this one's solving immediately. So that, that's a really good indication that um, the model was set up correctly and we don't have to go through much of a repair model um, process. And here we can start reviewing the results. Uh, you know, they seem pretty reasonable. This is sort of just deflection. Um, so a six inch deflection. And different load combinations if they've been defined as well. So it looks like we some, have some wind loading, some dead loads. And um, yeah, we can sort of proceed with the rest of the design process.